When you feel that feeling and it's visceral, no person, no thing, no experience will stand in the way between you and that vision. And you will be initiated by the universe into wealth. All of those cars and homes and whatever that is, there are symbols of what it looks like when a person actually arrives at this concept called abundance. If those things help them to associate with something that creates a feeling of abundance, and they're building their vision board to help them to get clear on their intent, then that's fine because they're associating objects or things or material things that they'll say, that's when I know that I'm abundant. Other people will say, look, abundance just means that I have more than I need. And I'm happy with that. And for them, there's a feeling that is associated with that. And when they begin to dream about their future, they may see themselves in a scene or see themselves a certain way. I don't care what it takes for the person to get there because once they have their abundance, and this happens quite a bit in our work, when you finally have everything you want, there's only one thing you're gonna ask yourself, how am I gonna to contribute to the world? How am I gonna make a difference? So we use different tools to help people to get to that point, but if the person's doing the vision board and they're saying, when I get my new car, I get my new house, I get my new relationship, then I'm gonna feel so great then they're back to the program waiting yeah. for it to happen for them to feel the emotion they're believing their outer world has to change in order for them to feel better there's no effect of drawing the experience to you with that way so the person has to use those tools to get them into the emotional state for them to feel like it's already happened now think about this if you get up from a creative process and you feel grateful, you feel a love for life, you feel a joy for existence, you feel a passion for the moment, you will not be looking for your future because you'll feel like it's already happened. It's the moment that we start feeling those self-limiting emotions that we feel separation, and then we start looking for it again. If you're waiting, you're not creating, you're in separation again. So then, whatever it takes for you to move into a state of being. And what is a state of being? Thoughts are the vocabulary of the brain. Feelings are the vocabulary of your body. How you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So then if you wake up in the morning and you come back to your senses with a clean slate and you say, I don't feel anything, and you say, well, let me start thinking about all the problems in my life. Well, all those problems are connected to different people or different objects or things at different times and places. The moment you remember your problems, a memory is a record of the past. You're thinking in the past. Every one of those problems has an emotion associated with them. So all of a sudden you start feeling unhappy, you start feeling bitter, you start feeling frustrated. So now your body's in the past. So then most people then create a state of being that's connected to their past. And if they're in the familiar past, then they are going to crave the predictable future and they're gonna fall back into routine. We want people then to get very clear on that vision of their future, however they do it, and begin to combine that clear intention with an elevated emotion. And the stronger the emotion they feel from the vision they're creating, the more altered they feel inside of them, the more they're gonna pay attention to the pictures in their mind. And now they're remembering their future. And biologically, it's exactly the same as remembering your past. In fact, if you're not being defined by a vision in the future, it means you're making your past more real than your future. Mm -hmm. You're falling in love with your past. You're more in love with your past than you are with your future. That you're believing in your past more than you're believing in your future. When you get to that moment where you have that feeling, that's your compass because that feeling is going to drive your behaviors. It's gonna drive more of those thoughts. And when you feel that feeling and it's visceral, no person, no thing, no experience will stand in the way between you and that vision. And you will be initiated by the universe into wealth. Mm -hmm. You will be initiated into health. You'll be initiated into freedom. Those people, all those people that have healed themselves of all those different health conditions, they are so humble and so happy, and they feel so great that 
they would never trade this feeling because of what you thought of them. They've left that program behind a long time ago. They actually don't care how you think of them. They, they actually are so happy with themselves that they're no longer dependent on anything outside of them. Now, I think that's a really important moment because that's the moment we give people permission in our lives to do the same. We're in a convenience-based society. Mm. I mean, if, if you lose your internet connection or your cell phone doesn't do what it's supposed to, people get angry. That's 20 seconds, right? So here you are creating something out of nothing and you don't have the patience. That has to come out because a very, very masterful person who is abundant had to own impatience. So then never make it be about the end result. Mm. Make it be about effort. Mm. Every day you're overcoming. Every day you're out of the bleachers and you're on the field and you're giving it your all and you're practicing, keeping your energy up greater than your habits in your <laughs> body or the emotional conditioning of your body, greater than any circumstance in your environment mm. and sustaining it for an extended period of time. And then all of a sudden, when you're connected to the energy of your future, and you know what that feels like, you will know the moment you return back to the energy of your past. And if you tell me it's because of your boss or your coworker or your ex, I'm going to say, ah, oh, you're back to the unconscious program that you're the victim of your life. It takes some unlearning and the, the unlearning process is the most important process because once you do that, you're clearing out room for the next creation to be easier mm. and the next one to be easier because you're starting to understand the formula a little better. And you start saying, I'm not going to take that personally, or I'm not going to react, or I'm not going to go back to that person again. I'm just going to self-regulate again. You only need a few experiences to know that this is the truth. And then you start making, start managing your attention and you manage your energy a lot better. And I think I always say, I don't care that you fall off the horse. I just care when you get back on. Because some people mm -hmm. fall off and then they have to go into guilt and analysis and, and they take weeks. And well, you could have just said, eh, I fell off. Let me just get back on and keep going here. I think that emotions are energy in motion. Mm -hmm. And so let's just say that we share the same experiences, okay? I don't, we're friends and we share the same experience. Oh, you're from London. I've been to London. My daughter mm -hmm. lives in London. And we have, hey, you do this, I do that. You did that. You, know, you own this, I own that. You know? So what we do is we actually look to see when we meet people mm -hmm. if we're matching neurologically or if we're matching emotionally. So if we share the same experiences, we share the same emotions. And if we share the same emotions, we can relate to one another. So this is where it gets sticky. So then the moment you start saying, that person did that to you once. Yeah, that person, I had a similar experience. That person did that to me. Now we open the door like, I'm going to use you to reaffirm my attachment to that emotion. And let's just work it up so that you can suffer and I can suffer and then we can have a conversation. And literally, we're sharing the same energy. And if we're sharing the same energy, we're sharing the same information. And we're bound by an invisible field of energy that keeps us connected. So then what does it take to break that energetic field? An energy that's greater than the energy that's holding it together. That's how you separate atoms that become a molecule. You, they're bound by an invisible field of energy that's keeping them connected. So you got to use a greater energy than the energy that's holding them together to separate them. Well, in order for you to change then, you can't have energy without awareness or consciousness. You got to go to a greater level of consciousness and change your energy. And nobody changes until they change their energy. And when they change their energy, they change their life. You may say, well, this person, you know, I use my enemy to reaffirm my addiction to hatred. I use my coworker to reaffirm my addiction to judgment. I use my ex to reaffirm my addiction to resentment. That we have these different people in our lives that we need to remind us of who we think we are. The enemy dies and you find another one. You know, your coworker uh, leaves and you start judging another one. It's not that. So then when there's no longer a vibrational match, when you start doing the work, there's no longer a vibrational match with you and your past, present reality, that, that person or that condition any longer. That person or condition is going to spiral away because you're no longer, you're no longer in need of that. So then our life begins to change when we change our energy and, and we begin to take our power back. That's essential for us to begin to create with. Now, some people can't handle that because 
they're not conscious that they're doing it. So they'll be working on their vision of the future, and yet they'll spend two hours lowering their energy back into victimization or suffering, and they want to know why their future isn't happening. Well, there's an unconscious program. Let's go after that. And once you start going after that, now all of a sudden your life starts to change again. So you can't say it doesn't work. On some level, we don't work. And if you're really invested in this, the question is, what is it about me? Where am I directing my attention or my energy? Who am I using to reaffirm some conditioning that I need to remember who, as my old self? So then when you stop reacting to the person or the person's now complaining to you and you're not complaining back, it's going to be an uncomfortable moment because you're all of a sudden seeing a part of you you used to be that you no longer are. And you have to be willing to not go there. And over time, that person will thank you and they'll say, I didn't even know that I was complaining that much. And by changing yourself, you help others. You know, it just, that's mm -hmm. how it works. How bad does it have to get? To what lowest level do you have to reach before people really make up their mind to change? My message is, why wait? I mean, yeah. when you're feeling so altered emotionally, you feel so bad, that's the moment you could actually see yourself for the first time because you're, you're not you're answering your cell phone, you're not responding to all your texts, you're not watching TV, you're not going out to dinners, you're not calling people back. You're, something's altered in you and you're starting to become self-aware. If you're waking up every day and you're combining a clear intention with an elevated emotion and you're changing your emotional state to be elevated, you could still see the old self from an elevated point of view and be stay conscious than from a limited point of view. And that's what I want for people. Like, let's go. I mean, what do you got to lose? What People are going to start wondering, like, did you change your medication? What's up with that guy? Something's different about him. You're not predictable any longer. And we say to our, our community, you know, when you're changing, you just stop talking about it. You're just too busy being it. Something's happening. The repetition of getting a few days in a row of that really well. I always say, God, if you had a great meditation, you wake up feeling better at the end of that meditation than when you started. And you do that the next day. And then the next day, you're going to start feeling better mm -hmm. all the time. And that your body's going to start feeling better and everything's going to start feeling better. And you're going to start feeling better about life. So then we have a thousand reasons. I have more than a thousand reasons every day to be unhappy with managing companies and staff and people, all that. But then when you rise above that and you choose just who you want to be, I think it makes a big impression. First yourself your family and your friends and the people you work with and then finally the, our communities. So I think that people are starting to figure that out. And when they imagine oxytocin levels in our student body, the love hormone, the love chemical, 200 times outside of normal. The latest research on oxytocin, a slight, slight elevation on oxytocin, it's impossible to hold a grudge. Now, so then what that means is you feel so amazing that why would you want to hold a grudge against that person. So forgiveness then is not something that you have to try to do to be spiritual. It's the side effect of saying, I don't want to give up this feeling for you or anybody. So I'm letting it go. I'm free in you. I'm free in myself. And my goodness, there's more liberation of energy. I call that the natural state of being. And we're knocking on that door. Why? Because as you begin to open your heart to life again, and you start trusting in your future and trusting in yourself a little bit more, and you start self-regulating with your heart, you do that properly, and you lead from that place, from that level of awareness, your life will change in dramatic ways.